Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about performing some post exploitation tasks on a Windows machine using PowerShell Empire. PowerShell Empire is a post exploitation framework built to operate as a pure PowerShell agent. PowerShell Empire has the means to execute PowerShell agents without the requirement of PowerShell.exe. For this lab demonstration, I will be using VirtualBox, the latest edition, with the extension pack. I'll be running one virtual install of Kali Linux, the latest version, updated and upgraded, and I'll be running one virtual install of Windows 7 Pro, which will be our target machine. Due to time constraints, I will not be covering any of the material, that is to say the lecture material, that is provided for you in the lab file. If you want to know more information about the terminology or the flow of how PowerShell Empire actually works, please open up the lab file and read the information I have posted. And so I'm going to take everyone through this lab from the beginning to the end. So to start off with, let's just go ahead and open up a terminal. And at the prompt, we're going to change the location of our working directory on over to the Empire directory, which is located up inside of the op folder. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. At the next prompt, we're going to launch that empire.sh script. I'll hit enter. Give it a moment. And Empire starts up. As we go through the lab, you're going to see that there's going to be some differences in the use of upper and lowercase letters. Surprisingly, some of these instances where we have uppercase letters as opposed to just using lowercase letters doesn't make much sense, but that's going to trick you up if you don't pay attention. So at the prompt, I've typed in listeners. This is the first thing we have to create if we're going to be up inside the PowerShell Empire. That changes our prompt on over to the listeners module. Now to see what's up inside here, I can type in help. And you can now see all the different commands that are available with this module. And what we're interested in is this command right here, use listener. So we're going to create an HTTP listener. So I'm going to type in use listener, all one word, give it a space, type in HTTP, hit enter. Now to see what we have to configure for this listener, we can type in info. And you'll see that a lot of the information has already been filled in for us. It's automatically going to grab the IP address of your attack machine. We see that right here. But we also need to do some other default configurations, such as adding a port and binding the IP address to this machine. And so to ensure that PowerShell Empire knows the IP address and the port it needs to use as a listener, I've typed in set host space HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of my tally machine colon the port that I want it to listen on. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. We're next going to bind the attack machine's IP address to PowerShell Empire. To do this, I've typed in set space bind IP, all one word. Now again, notice the upper and the lower case lettering of these commands. These will trick you up, so do pay attention. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now the last thing we have to do is tell the listener what port it's going to be listening on. So I've told it to use port 4444, and to do this, I've typed in set space port with a capital P space the port number I wanted to use, which is 4444. I'll hit enter. So the last thing we had to do was launch the listener. Now to do this, at that prompt, I just typed in the execute command and I pressed enter. Now the next thing we have to do is create a launcher. Now this launcher that I'm going to be creating is going to build us a PowerShell script. This PowerShell script is designed to disable the AV or the antivirus program over on our Windows target. So at the prompt, I've typed in Launcher PowerShell. Hit Enter. So once we have this Launcher payload created, we have to figure out how we're going to get it delivered over to the target machine. 
Now that's going to require some social engineering skills. You're going to have to have it delivered via an email, a web server. You're going to have to get the user somehow convinced that they need to launch this script. We're not going to do any of that. I'm just going to go ahead and show you how the script is installed onto the target and then we're going to launch it. So once you have the PowerShell script created, just go ahead and select everything that you see. You're going to right click on the script. You're going to do a copy selection. Now you're going to minimize your PowerShell Empire and we're going to go on over here to file system. Once we're up inside of the file system, we're going to scroll on down until we come to the var folder. Once you're inside of the var folder, just open up the www folder. And from there, you're going to open up the HTML folder. Now, I've already created an happydays.bat file. But to do this from scratch, you're just going to right click inside of the window. You're going to create a new document. It's going to be an empty file. Whatever it is you call it, we'll just use an asterisk here. It has to have a bat extension. So I've called my file happydays.bat. You can call your file happydays.bat or anything you want to call it. Just make sure that it has the extension of bat. Go ahead and cancel that out. Now once you have that file created, just go ahead and double click it. That's going to open it up inside of this window pane. You're just going to right click and you're going to paste the contents of that script that you copied from PowerShell. When you're all done with that, just close it out. It's going to prompt you to save the contents or the changes to that file. Go ahead and save the contents. We can now go on over to our Windows 7 machine. From my Windows 7 machine, I'm just going to open up a browser. Up inside the address bar, I can just type in the IP address of my web server running on my Kali machine. And you'll see that it brings up the default web page. Now I need to bring on over that batch file that we created. To do that, I'm just going to type in a backslash, type in happy days.bat. I'll hit enter. And when you hit enter, you'll notice down here at the bottom, it's going to give you two options. You can either run the batch file or you can save it. Go ahead and save it. Now you can open up that folder up inside of your downloads and you can view it. Now, once you see that the batch file has been brought over, go ahead and run it. It's just going to blink real fast. And that tells you that it ran. We can now return back on over to our PowerShell Empire. Bring it back up. And you're going to see that we now have an active connection. And you can see that down here at the bottom of our terminal. Go ahead and hit Enter to have a prompt. When we created the connection between our Kali machine and our Windows 7 target, we also created an agent. So this new agent has the name of, right here, it's a default name that is just applied. We don't have to use it. We can actually rename it if we so desire. That's probably what we're going to do. But before we can do that, we have to go in to the agents module. So at the prompt here, I'm just going to type in agents. And you'll see that I have one active agent, and it is that name right there. Now, if you would like to rename that to something more user-friendly, you can just type in rename. Go ahead and grab the name of your agent, and you can just paste that on the line. And now you have to give it the new user-friendly name. I'll call mine Win7. Hit Enter. And it tells me that that name is already in use. So I'll bring this back up. And I'll just type in pro to the end of Win7. And we have a new name for our current agent that's being used. Now to confirm that the name change did take place, I can just type in agents one more time. And you'll notice that my agent now has the name of Win7 Pro. To be able to interact with my Windows 7 target machine, I'm going to have to type in at the prompt interact space the name of the agent that I'm going to be using for the interaction. So at the prompt I've just typed in interact space Win7 Pro. I'm going to hit enter and you notice my prompt changes so let me know that I'm currently using that agent called Win7 Pro. 
Now to see what information is currently available on our Windows 7 target at the prompt, I can type in sysinfo. I'll hit enter. It's going to create a task. It's going to take a couple of seconds for the task to build and then it's going to run. So what we're interested in is this high integrity and it has a status of 1. The 1 means that we have administrative access on the target machine. If it is a 0 or it says false, then we do not have administrative access. Go ahead and hit enter to get a prompt. So we're now ready to begin some post exploitation tasks. The first thing that we're going to do is gather up some credentials off of our Windows 7 target using Mimikatz. So at the prompt, I'm just going to type in Mimikatz. Again, it's doing another task. Give it a second. You can see that the job has now started. And when Mimikatz is all done, you can see the user information that's being pulled over that includes the hash for the NTLMN and any clear passwords that are available. So you can scroll on down here and you can see that we have a clear password available here. But we also have all the hashes that we need to be able to use other attacks such as pass the hash as well as decrypt these hashes if we so desire. You can go ahead and hit enter to bring back your prompt. Another useful command that we can use to pull over any logon information is called creds. So at the prompt, I've typed in CREDS, creds, all lowercase. I'm going to hit enter. And we can see that the information for the usernames and passwords is presented to us, but it's much more digestible. If you would like to interact with your target using the terminal or the command prompt, as it's called on our Windows 7 target, well, then we can type in and use the shell command. So I can type in shell, followed by whatever command I want to use, such as netstat. Give it a space, a dash A N O, and we'll see all the current connections that are available on our Windows 7 machine. Again, the task has to build, and when it comes back, we can see all the active connections that we have currently on our Windows 7 machine. Go ahead and hit enter to bring back up your prompt. So, if you would like to see if you can ping from your target on over here to your Kali machine, you can type in shell. You type in ping and the IP address of your Kali machine. Hit enter. Give it a chance to build up the task. And it comes back letting you know that you have four good replies. Let's go ahead and hit enter to bring back our prompt. Now, if you would like to see the current IP configuration for that Windows 7 target, you can type in shell IP config. Hit enter. Let the task build. And it comes back and it gives you the IP information currently available on that Windows 7 target. Let's go ahead and hit enter to bring back our prompt. So another thing that we can do while we're up inside of the agent is we can switch modules. So for this demonstration, I'm going to send a message on over to my Windows 7 target, letting them know that they've been hacked. But you can use this message module to send them an error message, to tell them to reboot, so at the prompt, I'm just going to say the following. Use module trollsploit forward slash message. Now I'll notice that my prompt changes, so let me know that I'm inside of that module. And so to see what different options I can use with this trollsploit to send a message, I can just type in info. And you see that I can do a number of things. I can send an agent, a message text, an icon type, or a title. I can do all this with this specific module. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send a message text. So the message text that I want to send just for this demonstration is you have been hacked. Let's see what happens when I send this message on over to the target. And now once I've typed in and I come back to the prompt, I've got to launch the module. Now to do this, I'm just going to type in execute. Hit enter. And that's going to let me know that this isn't always safe. I'm going to go ahead and type in Y for I don't care. And the message has been sent. Now if I go on over here to my Windows 7 machine, you'll see that we have that message. Let's go on back on over to PowerShell Empire. Go ahead and hit enter to bring back up your prompt. And so the last thing we need to do is leave ourselves a persistent connection. 
Now to do this, I'm just going to type in the command back. That's going to give me back on over to my agent. If you would like to see all the available commands that are available with the agent, just type in help. And this will give you the entire list of commands that are available with any agent up inside of PowerShell Empire. And so that we can create a persistent connection and have access to our Windows 7 target anytime we want, and especially after it restarts, we can just use a different module. Now the module we're going to use is the persistence forward slash elevated forward slash registry asterisk module. So at the prompt, I'm just going to type in, or in this case, copy and paste from my lab file, use module space persistence forward slash elevated forward slash registry asterisk. Go ahead and hit enter. Now notice that my prompt changes to let you know that we're inside of that module. Now we've got to set the listener. So to do this, I'm going to have to use the set command, set listener. Now this is where you get in trouble because this listener command has a capital L. So I've typed in set space listener with a capital L, HTTP. Go ahead and hit enter. Now the next thing I have to do is type in the execute command. Then it's going to let me know that this is not OPSEC safe. I say Y for I don't care. Hit enter. And let you know that a new agent has been created and that the hack to the registry on our Windows 7 target is complete. And now we're going to go ahead and show that this actually works by just restarting our Windows 7 machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter, come back to a prompt, and I will restart my Windows 7 machine. We'll go on back on over to my PowerShell Empire. And when it comes back up, we'll be notified that a new agent has been created for the new connection that was established after our Windows 7 machine restarted. And you can see that information right here. Go ahead and hit enter. Now, if you want to interact with this new agent, you're going to have to back out one level. Let's go ahead and type in agents. Now we can go ahead and interact with our new agent. So I'll type in interact. And we'll go ahead and paste that name of the new agent. And there we are. And again, we can show that we're actually interacting with our Windows 7 target just by typing in sysinfo. Give it a chance to build up the task. And we're back in. Go ahead and hit enter. Come back to the prompt. Now if we would like to to remove any of the stale agents that we currently have up inside of our PowerShell Empire, we can go ahead and type in agents, hit enter, and now I can just type in a remove stale, hit enter, and if I do agents one more time, you'll notice I only have one agent, and that's the one that's active. Now if I would like to remove that active agent, I can use the kill command. So I can type in kill space the name of the agent I want to kill. I'll just hit enter and it asks me if I'm sure and I'll say yes. You'll notice that if I type in agents, it comes back and it tells you that there are no agents currently registered. And we can also remove any listeners just by typing in listeners, hit enter. Now we only have one listener, but if I had a bunch in there and I wanted to get rid of them, I could just type in kill space all. Hit enter. It'll ask you again, are you sure you want to do this? You type in Y for yes. And now if I just type in listeners one more time and hit enter, you'll notice that there are no listeners currently available. And so in this short video presentation, you were introduced to some of the most common post exploitation tasks that we can perform up inside the PowerShell Empire. You got questions, you got concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.